Okay, let's see what we got. Now, George, I think we're gonna be okay. Let me go get my mouse. I'll be right back. <laughs> And my mouse pad. Let's see if we have anybody in here. Hello, everybody. Getting set up. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Okay. I'm just turning on my PC. YouTube. Hi. Hello, everybody. Oh, okay. A little sparkling soda. Hey, Debbie Epps. Hi, Best Yet. Hi, Unicorn Lady. Hi, Flo. Hi, Quintella. Hello, Sin Growers. Welcome to my live chat. Dina Murphy, hello. Gardner 99, hello. Gardening with Cocktails with Joy. Gardening and Cocktails with Joy. Ooh, that was a delicious caramel dessert drink you made the other day. Hey, Antia. Hi, Deb M. Hi, Tia. Let's see who else is in here. All's Net Homesteader, Peanut Peppers. Hello. Glad you made it, Peanut. Karen Witherspoon. Okay, Stinky Mud Puddle Ranch. Oh, thank you, Stinky Puddle Ranch. I moved my grow room, some of it in this area, because I'm working in that room doing a lot of stuff. I'll explain it later. Okay. Check out Best Yet's uh, website. Uh, she gave a lot of seeds the other day to her daughter who was visiting her. And I know she was very happy. I could feel the love. And uh, with her other daughter, she made a uh, a stir-fry dish. Hi, Loretta King. Okay, I think I've spoken to everybody that's in here. My Premature Garden, Miss Irene is here. I started watching your video and then I got stopped for something. I think a phone call, Miss Irene. Go check out her website. Mason, good to see you. Now I know who you are, Mason. Barb Brownlee is here. Roots, Shoots, and Garden Boots is here. Thank you very much for coming in. Hattie Lamar, the movie star, is here. Okay. If I admitted anybody, see, Thomas is here. Brenda Allen is here. You made it, Brenda. And I did speak to Antia, I think. If not, glad you're here, Antia. And Clausen World is here. Okay. As you can see, I've got my part of my grow room uh, behind me. I moved it over out here where I can just sweep up everything because I have carpet in that room and it's a pain. Uh, so I'm having that pulled up. 
<coughs> excuse me, I think I told you last week I'm having some shelves built in that closet. Heavy, strong wooden shelves that can accommodate all of my canning jars. Hi, Wanda B. Good to see you, too. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a good setting right here. Um, and I can sweep the floor because I have porcelain tile down here. And um, what I did for you guys is I went ahead and pre-sanitized the potty mix. So I would do like a mock demonstration uh, because I was thinking about it. If I went ahead and did it live, it would be too hot uh, for me to work, work with it. Okay. So I need to have it cooled down. In fact, I filled up a six pack of, um, uh, potty mix and I put it in the refrigerator on a uh, saucer. So I'm gonna go get that while you guys, Myra McCain is here. Nice to see you. Lavender lady is here. I'm just going up and making sure I didn't omit anybody. If I did charge it to my head, not my heart. Because you guys know I love all of you very much. I'm going to go ahead on and go get that soil real, real quick while you all speaking to each other. Now, it really isn't soil. It is the Jiffy C starting mix. You guys, I recommend that you use whatever preference you like when you're starting seeds. But this is what I use. I share it all the time. I'm going to share it again. I got this at Home Depot. You can get it basically at any uh, major big box stores. It has... Uh, natural and organic ingredients in it, but that doesn't mean that it can't have fungus in that eggs or any other type of fungus in there. So what I did was I took boiling water, and this is still a little hot, and I just, let me see if you can see this. And I just added, simply added it to this uh, 16 quart container. Everybody see that? Yeah, you can see that. And then I just mixed it up real good. I popped the tea kettle was still hot. And then I added two tablespoons. Uh, and by the way, that's one whole bag, 12 quarts of Jiffy Mix here. And I added two tablespoons of neem oil. And I, you know, kind of evenly distributed it as much as I could. And then I just folded it over. And this is the consistency. I can't tell you how much water. It was one tea kettle. I don't know how many quarts this tea kettle makes, but you can um, put about uh, two large uh, quart mason jars worth of water. Because I don't like my potty mix to be too soupy. Can you see that? I like to squeeze it together. You can see that water that came out, but it's still pliable. I don't want it too moist. Because when you have too much moisture, that's when you start getting those fungus. And there's a lot of other different types of fungus. It's not just um, uh, the fungus gnats. But that's the worst one that will multiply real fast. And what I was looking for is cinnamon. If you see evidence of fungus, hold back on the water and start applying some, uh, some cinnamon, 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 just bring it across the top. Let me go and see if I missed something. Hold your questions, everybody. Hold your questions. Thank you, Tia. Hold your questions until I get done. I'm going to demonstrate this about three times. I've got a couple people that I told them to drive safely. They're coming from work and they're afraid they're going to miss it. And I told them it'll be in the replay, but still, I'm going to demonstrate it several times. Okay? So don't worry about that. 
Okay, so this is the consistency. You, when you squeeze it, you want a little water to come out. Now, you might want to know, ask me what water to use. What I use is normally rainwater, but not when I'm starting seeds in the house. And even though, though I put stuff in my rainwater to, to uh, organically kill fungus, gnats, gnats, flies, and their larvae, or larva, however you want to say it, I still don't want to bring that element into my home. So I use regular tap water, and this is what I do. Oh, I moved it. I fill up a gallon a day before I'm getting ready to start. I leave the top off of it so that the chlorine can escape. Does that make sense? That's an old beauty school trick that I learned. Or you could just get you a gallon of distilled water or drinking water, purified drinking water. Okay? That doesn't have all that chlorine in it. Behind me, I'm looking at my monitor now. Over here are my soursop trees. And guys, I mean, they were naked looking. And they have really grown back beautifully. Especially that big one up there. I don't think you can see it real well. I'm going to try to raise the camera up. Yeah. See how, how cool that is now? It was about 10 leaves on there about two months ago. And then I'll go down a little bit further. Move this out the way. Down, down, down. So you can see the short one has a lot of leaves on it too. And all I did, guys, was held the water back. Put them uh, under some grow lights, and I wired a couple of grow lights on this little cheap grow light uh, reading lamp. It's not a grow light, it's a lamp. It only has two, um, two, you know, places where you put lamps where you put your grow lights in. It was $11.34 at Walmart, and I just added more uh, grow lights that you can clamp on. Okay? So just making sure it gets a lot of light. And I rotate it every now and then. And these lights, and you can see this has been on since 5 or 6 this morning. I'm having my fingers actually touching the bulb. And it doesn't generate any heat. So if it gets right up on there, it won't matter. It will not burn them. So that's the significance of getting the proper grow light bulbs. Can you use regular lights, LED lights? Yeah, you can. You can get away with it, but you're going to have a lot of issues with burning and, get, and getting too hot. So I prefer just to get the right ones. Okay? All right. And then over here, let me turn this a little bit. And that is my calamondin tree. Now, the place where I got that tree has gone out of business. It was U.S. Citrus. And if you go back and you look at my video about a year and a half ago, you will see that that tree was this tall, 12 inches with just a few little leaves on it. In fact, I thought I got ripped off. But then I read all the information and the, um, I guess he's a horticulturist that started his company said that they grafted it on to the right root stock that would allow it to double its growth in a few months. And guys, you know when I brought this tree in the house, I capped it off at two, pardon me, uh, three feet at the top, rooting it for another tree. Okay? So I just want to share that with you. Let me get my hand out the way of what I got going on behind me. And then... I want to show you the, the shelves that I hinted at last week. These are just regular Home Depot shelves. Uh, they're 48 inches wide. And I, no, I think these are 36. And I do have some that are 48 inches. And if you can look up here, you can see I started breathing in some of the things that I use for my um, seed starting uh, preparation or procedure. And I have like the inexpensive shop, shop lights from Home Depot and Overstock.com. And I think I bought a case of the 32 watt bulbs from eBay. I just search all over. Some things I got from the greenhouse. No, it's a website. It's called greenhousemegastore.com. And if you and Amazon, of course. And if you didn't know, some of the mer these merchants are on all the different websites. 
For example, I bought something from Amazon and it was shipped from greenhousemakerstore.com. I bought something from eBay and it was shipped through Amazon. So a lot of these merchants are on different um, selling or sales platforms. Okay, so shop around. Somebody mentioned in the comments of my last video that I put out about the tomatoes and the five-year-old pepper plant and the two-year-old pepper plant, they wanted to know how, where I get my greenhouse from, how do I um, get pollination. That comes from research and experience. You don't want to put anything in your greenhouse, and I promise that person I will answer this question on the live. You don't put anything thing in the greenhouse that you can't manually pollinate yourself or is self-pollinating. Tomatoes, all you need to do is shake them, peppers the same way. Some varieties of lemon, I should say citrus, limes, lemons, uh, calamandin, things that I'm familiar with, uh, you can hand pollinate them and some of them will pollinate on their own. So do your research and know what you can grow into your inside of your greenhouse during the winter. Another thing I want to talk to you about the greenhouse is I hope that you all were really getting my point because I, I can tell some people don't watch the whole video because YouTube gives you the, um, the average amount of time that a person will watch the video. And so some of you won't watch the beginning. And that's cool. I appreciate you watching whatever you watch. And I'm not complaining. But sometimes you do miss some important or some good pearls from Lady Cheryl. And I'm telling you guys, I'm very pleased with the five piece. I don't know if that was a white flower or a piece of cotton. Oh, from the, from the paper towel. I'm very pleased with the five piece greenhouse cover that I purchased because it has these little holes in it when you put that are grommets and you put these uh, attachments on them and so a lot of the um, humidity can escape where those little holes are as long as it doesn't get too cold that that's not a problem and I've just noticed I haven't seen any evidence of fungus yet I was looking at my journal this morning and I saw fungus around Christmas time last year so I think when I went in a few weeks earlier, Brian, Bria, and I harvested the green tomatoes. you all remember that? Well, I used the serenade, the diluted serenade, and I start, started early. And so since I didn't see anything today, yesterday when I made that video, I didn't spray again. I'm going to spray at, you know, two-week intervals unless I see evidence. And the fungus is soil-borne, Okay. All right, so I don't want you guys to think. Well, I want you to be inspired, and I want you to get a greenhouse, but I don't want you to be one of those people that say, well, nobody told me this. Nobody told me you had this issue or that issue. Because if you all remember, I think I started in October or November giving you little tips of how to grow in the greenhouse how to regulate the temperature, that type of thing. Every life I had, up until it turned a little cool or cold in some areas, I was giving information about the greenhouse. So I'm getting a lot of emails about the greenhouse. They were really impressed that I have fresh tomatoes growing inside my greenhouse. But it's not easy. I'm not saying it's real hard. I'm just saying don't just put up a greenhouse and think, wow, I'm start growing tomatoes. It's a lot of work. In one of my lives, I explained to you guys how I strategically anchored that greenhouse and put it up against a fence close to another structure so that the wind can't just whip it up and take it away because we get very high winds in North Texas. So keep all of these uh, things in mind. And I encourage you to get to a greenhouse, but do your research. Okay, how many of you seen a picture on Facebook where somebody said they put their greenhouse up, they had a storm a couple days later, and then they showed the frame all mangled? 
Okay, so let that be a reminder to you. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look and see if I have any questions, and then I'm going to move on to starting the hibiscus. Let's see if we got any questions. Still, everybody is speaking good. Hey, Angela. I didn't speak to you earlier. Yankee sister. Hello. Hi, Living Miracle Homestead. And I think I got it. Nope. A couple more people. I got everybody. Very good. Also, um, everybody needs to carve out their, their own little niche on the internet. The pandemic has taught, uh, has uh, allowed me to help a lot of new gardeners for the first time. As well as, so that's been my focus. And now I'm moving into 21, I'm going to be focusing on health. And that's why I brought up the, um, the bay leaf plant. And today, we're starting our series of growing the Texas Star Hibiscus. Now, if you don't have those seeds, you can grow any type of hibiscus as long as you're growing it organically. So you can't put like miracle Grow, that blue liquids chemical. You can't do like those spikes, chemical spikes, things like that, because you don't want to drink tea that's made from that, because that, that is not healthy. So you do not have to grow the Texas Star Hibiscus, but if you want to, along with us, you can purchase those seeds off of eBay. Now I'm gonna share this with you. I found more seeds today in the greenhouse when I was looking for different containers and things. These are from 2019. I'm gonna start them, but I, I don't know how uh, the germination is going to be. And if they uh, germinate really well, I'm going to label them. This will be 2019. Here are only seeds that I have left for 2020. And that's because I mailed off, I think, 10 or 11 more packages after I closed it out. People still wanted to get in on it. And I didn't have a heart to say no. I had to turn two people down because I need enough to get going. You know, can y'all see that? So I just have a handful of seeds myself. And there might be some more pods out there out in the uh, food forest. I'm not really sure. But anybody that don't have seeds, try eBay. I don't, I don't recommend any merchants on eBay at all. And I do that because I had a bad experience. Well, I had a good experience with a merchant, but the other person didn't. And so I say do the research yourself. Look at their um, ratings. Read what other people have said about them. Look at how many years they're on eBay. And if they have, I say, 98% uh, rating or higher, then I would trust them. But one thing about eBay is this. They are a subsidiary of PayPal. And if you file a claim, PayPal will refund your money. Unless the merchant explicitly states before the sale in their little description, no refunds. Okay? All right. So now let's move on to the Texas Star Hibiscus. This is the one that you could drink every day and it will lower your blood pressure. You could drink a hot tea. You can make sun tea. You could drink it plain. You can add, you know, lemon juice, honey, peach. It's a really good uh, combination, okay? And if you just know anybody that's uh, on medication, anybody on medication for uh, uh, high blood pressure or on medication for kidney disease, this will be a wonderful gift to give them. And the good thing about this plant is once you remove the leaves off of the plant, no matter what time of year, if you put it in a brown paper bag, it will... The leaves are so thin and delicate, it will dehydrate within 48 hours, two days. Okay? I'm going to check my um, 
feed to see if I got any questions, and then I'm going to move on. Hi, Miller's Garden. Hi, Flo Jones. Hi, E-Tiz. Hi, Lion Crest. And I uh, love it. Some of you have named me your auntie. I love it. Your mama. I, I love it. So, yeah, keep doing it. And Flo jo Jones said she loved, loved the Texas Star Hibiscus. I do. It's such a beautiful flower. I showed a picture of it in my last video. Okay, so now, let's get back to what I was saying earlier. I took the 12-quart bag. And I put about two quarts of water into this container. And then I stirred it up really good. And then I added two tablespoons of neem oil. Now get this, get this part real good. You can see that good. You want to use 100% pure cold press neem oil. No other additives whatsoever. All of those places that I named earlier, Amazon.com, eBay, Etsy, I think, I'm not sure if Greenhouse Mega Store has it, but this oil will turn thick if you have a temperature below 70 degrees. Between 70 and 95, you won't have to liquefy it. I had to put this into my microwave because it was in my kitchen window and it got a little thick. Okay, is there a question about that? I'm seeing my feed. Brenda Allen, Lady Cheryl, so how do you make the tea? I just told you, you can, you can drink it hot. You can do sun tea. You know what sun tea is, right? Where you just put the tea into a, a big jar and then you just sit it out in the sun. Or you can pour it into uh, one of those steepers. They're kind of like aluminum and some of them are plastic. And then you just pour the hot water over it. Or you can put it in your Mr. Coffee Maker. You can get refillable k pads on Amazon, any place, and put the tea down in that and do you brew you one cup. I do it all kinds of ways, okay? All right. Hi, Cheryl Taylor. Yes, Gardener 99. All varieties of hibiscus are edible and drinkable, but you, ca you cannot. No, you can I recommend that it must be grown organically. The reason why we're doing the Texas Star Hibiscus is because that's the one that I use, that's the one that I know that works, and that's the one that becomes a perennial in most garden zones, and it comes back every year. Okay? All right. Okay, so hold your questions. Hold your question. There's somebody coming in. Alice Green. Hi. So I showed the consistency. About two quarts of water into this 12 package. You squeeze it real good. You see that water coming down. That's the consistency that you want. Now, some of you are probably going to use those um, pea pellets with the fabric. Some of you are going to use potting mix or whatever. I can't tell nobody what to use, but I've been preaching and teaching that I prefer the Jiffy C starting mix because that's the best results that I get as far as my germination is concerned. Okay. And so then you're going to take your, let me do another one. This one's already done. You're going to take your container. Let me show you what I do. See right here, I've got green giant beef steak, uh, early girl, that's what I did last year. I'll just take these off. Now, if I was smart, I would save this and just put the same thing back in here so I don't have to label them again, right? But for the sake of the for the sake of demonstrating purposes, I'm going to just show you that you can put little labels on here. And the reason why I put little labels as opposed to those big tall sticks is because eventually you're going to put them in a container, right? And eventually, you're going to put the plastic dome over it so you don't want those big sticks sticking up in the way. Some people do use pop popsicle sticks. Pop 
personally, I prefer to just put a little a label on it. And that's because I have my own company and I never got rid of all of my stuff. So I have a whole lot of different size of labels. Right here are some circle labels that I'm not using at all. Okay, let me show you. Oh, here's some square ones. So all I have to do is just come in here and cut and then cut down, cut again, and then I have a little label to put into the six pack. Here, I wanna show you this. I left this on on purpose to show you that I, I grow so many heirloom uh, zinnias that I just name them one, two, three, four, all the way to 13. And then I know five is right here. So I have three fives here. Six is right here. I have three sixes. And I have in my journal what is what. Because sometimes it gets confusing. You got to write down the whole name of a uh, flower. Okay, so here is the one that I'm going to finish. So what when I do this, I put the soil in here, the starting mix. I press down. You see, I'm get, watch the extra water come out. You see it? And then I put a little bit more, and I press down. I pack it. All of those are packed really well. Now, once you do this, this is so moist, you don't have to water this for a week. Any questions? Okay, now let me show you what I do next. You can use a pencil, you can use a straw, you can use whatever you want. And I just make little holes. Where's my little, with a little divot. You can use the back of the, the long handle of a wooden spoon. Can everybody see well? And I go in opposite corners. Let me show you, I'm gonna show, show, point to it like this. I put one seed here, one seed here. One seed here, one seed here. That way they have plenty of room if I need to separate them late, later. And if I have a 100% germination rate and I don't need all of these, sorry, save the big pretty one, okay? New to this gardening thing, willing to learn. All right, that's all you have to have, a willingness to learn and to listen. And don't be like Brenda Allen trying to ask me how to make the tea ahead of time. I'm going to show you how to do that, Brenda. <laughs> I'm going to do a live demonstration on it. Okay? So right now, you can't really see that. Let me see if I can go down a little bit more. Yeah, you can. I'm going to just put a little hole here, 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 here. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. That's 12, two times six. Then I'm gonna take my seeds. Everybody see that? And I'm just gonna drop one seed at a time. Now I know you all watch some of my videos and greens and corn and a lot of beans. I put a lot of them in there, you know, cause I know I can just gingerly take them apart and transplant them, but not these. These things can grow up to 20 something feet. Okay, so I'm just going to drop one. And, I'm, and I only went down, guys, about a fourth of an inch. That's very important. You don't want to bury them too deep. Okay? And so I'm putting one in each hole, and they're real small seeds. And everybody who got their seeds from me, you got at least 12. If, if Bria liked your name, she might have gave you an extra one, <laughs> or 15 or so. I'm not kidding you not. She was doing that crap. Okay, so they're in there, and you can see they're right there at the surface. And so all you have to do is take your hand and that little part of soil that you kind of divvied up, just cover it up lightly. And I can smell the neem oil, and it smells great. And then you want to pat it all down. And... From this point on, you want to make sure that you only lightly missed the top surface. 
You want it to dry almost completely out. If you watch some of my videos and start see start, I'll show you to you. And I'll show you the color of the soil will turn a different color. It'll be kind of like this. As opposed to that real dark color. Then after it dries out, this is neem oil and distilled water. You want to just lightly spray across the top. That's it. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Good. Now, once, once your plant break, and by the way, you do not have to put these under a light. I do see people doing it, but they're just wasting energy. It has to germinate first. Once you see any green out of any cell of these six cells, it is then that you would put your plant under a green light. But let me back up and tell you this. You can also expedite your germination by putting your seedling six pack on a heating pad. And you would put them, let me go get that again. Everybody see that tray? That tray is the same dimensions of the heating mat. It is 10 by 20.75. So this heating mat will fit under, under here perfectly. Let me try to put it right here. Take some stuff down. Got a couple books too far back. Okay, everybody can see that? Yeah, you can see it. Perfect. Then you put your little seeds right here. After you have done what? Can somebody tell me? Who's going to tell me? There's something you need to do. Type it in. I just told you. Type it in, please. See green? No. You don't, you don't, you, you're not gonna see no green for between, it could be 10 to 12 days. It could be a little two weeks. Nope, you've already got enough moisture. It's not spray it. Nope, you've already compacted the soil and put it on top, you want to label it. Nobody got it. Label it, because I'm telling you, you may think you can remember, but I'm telling when you grow as many seeds as I grow, you'll get confused. So I made a habit of being organized as I go along, okay? Label it before you move on to the next one. No light. Label. Nina got it. Cheryl said it. I don't know if you all said it after I said it or what. Put the clear lid on. Nope. No cover. Label it. Yankee sister, you're right. Label it and then put your clear lid on. Now, I don't know if you all can see. I strategically checked this room out where I want it. Can you see that, that vent up there? See that vent? I see it. Yeah, you can see it. See it? That vent is going to, all my seedlings are going to be right up there. They're going to start germinating fast. Because I'm sweating a little bit, and I don't have no heat on, so I can imagine if the heat, the heat was on. That's what was wrong last week. I should have had turned the heat down. Then you put the clear lid on. But let me tell you something about that lid. Don't leave that lid on for 24 hours. That lid will create too much humidity and you'll start growing a fungus. Everybody with me? Uh, whoever said my grow room is pretty butterfly tin, I'm in my living room. I'm, I, I, this living room is very big. I have an open floor plan. And 
I, I, I can put three couches in here and two chairs. So I just took off about six feet of the living room and put my grow area here while I'm doing this seminar and doing some transitioning in my grow room. I got carpet on the floor and it's just, it's not working. But thank you, Butterlight. Okay, here's a question in all caps from Irene, my premature guard, premature guard. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have confused many C's because I lose the label. Yeah, yeah, and I've lost track of what I was doing, and I would have to wait. And sometimes some seedlings look alike, and you don't know until they grow like the second leaf. For example, um... Your squashes, your cucumbers. Sometimes you can smell them and you can tell. So I'm just telling you, especially when you're dealing with a lot of heirloom varieties, they're going to start looking alike. So please, 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 if you don't learn nothing else tonight, label as you go. It's kind of like that old computer saying, save as you go on the computer in case it crash and you lose all your information. I was writing my second book, My Computer Crash. I lost a lot of information. But I think I went back and pieced it together and wrote it better than it was originally. So sometimes that can be a good thing. Okay, any questions about the procedure so far? Brenda, don't ask me a question yet that I haven't covered. Because I'm going to get to it. Any questions about the procedure so far? Brenda and best yet. <laughs> I draw the seedlings in my journal. Yes, Butterlight 100. That is a wonderful thing. I do the same thing, um, not so much with seedlings, but when I'm outlining my garden. Because when I'm watering my seedlings, and we're going to get on to, to that in a minute, I may not put them back the way it was in my drawing. But that is good if, if you put it back the same way. That's a real good idea. Somebody said they had a question. Somebody said, nope, no questions. I love that. I have taken photos to keep track. That, that Rodney, how you doing? I didn't know you were here, Rodney Parker Jr. That's a great idea. <coughs> I am listening and learning some good information. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm so happy you're here. Okay, that's a really good idea because I have done that with my shoes. <laughs> I've taken pictures of my shoes and put the pictures on the outside of the box. <laughs> so you can incorporate a lot of things that you do in your everyday normal life into this gardening deal. Okay, Cheryl Taylor has a question. You know, she's just saying thank you because she forget the label so much. She was thinking about a journal, but how do you keep up with that? I just write in it every day. And if I can't, if something comes to my mind, I'm in bed or something, I grab my cell phone and put a note in my cell phone in the notes, and then I'll put it in the journal. Somebody, Myra, very good question. I was going to go into that, but I, 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 I kind of got ahead of myself. She wanted to know <coughs> how much spray. Myra, I use a half a teaspoon to a 16-ounce bottle of water. And I got dirt under my nails, forgive me. A half a teaspoon, okay? Anytime you're working with seedlings, you want to go weak. A weaker solution. Okay? And also, because you haven't put anything in here to emulsify, blend the oil together, you're going to have to shake it up every time you use it. Good question, Myra. Kim Stage, how you doing? Stage 52. So she took pictures of her shoes. My permaculture gardener says, should the soil be warm, cool, room temperature? Room temperature. That is a good question. Because if you put those, that's why I told you I did this earlier. You might not have been in here, Miss Irene. I said that I decided to mock the demonstration because if I put that boiling water in here, I'll have to wait an hour. And you don't want to put your seedlings in boiling water because all they're going to do is cook. And they will not germinate. So... I let it cool off some, and then I took a saucer, and I put this in the refrigerator. And I keep my refrigerator at 40 degrees, so it cooled down before I put the seeds in there. Okay? Now, in case somebody came in late, 
So Yankee Sister says, some journals have grids to record your trades as a backup. Very good. Okay, so some, some people came in late, and I told them in this, um, you're welcome, Irene, uh, Miss Irene. Um, and I, I, your, my, your, your, your name crossed my mind for something. Oh, your business. You and your husband was going to do something with your business, and you told him he had to handle it tonight because you're going to be in the live. I appreciate that sacrifice, and I thank your husband, too. Okay, I use a journal with a C starting page. Very good, Bob Brownlee. And I uh, shared on my Facebook group, C to Spoon. They have a lot of good information in that free app. Okay, that tells you when, okay, Bessie, I'll get you. When, when you use that app, it'll tell you when to start your seeds, when you can put them out to be acclimated, when, you know, everything. So you want to write that down. Seed to Spoon is a good app. Another one that is good, a source that is good about when to start seeds is the Farmer's Almanac website. Anything you want to know about starting seeds is on there. You can also check my seed play starting list. Also, I have about four or five, and after, if I can remember, tomorrow I'm going to make um, a play with, list with just the Texas Star Hibiscus so you can see how they transition, how they got so big, how Bree and I drink the tea hot, how we drink it cold, how I pot up, okay? So um, I have peat moss and vermiculite can I mix those together without the coconut coat? Yes, you can. Wait a minute. For a potty mix or a seeding mix? Butter Light 100. Hey, Rob. Nice to see you. I didn't see you in here, but I see the best yet is speaking to you. Yes, you can. Tia and... Um, Best yet, if there's a cheese sandwich in there, I see somebody block something, just take it out. High container crops. And don't forget, anybody that want to join my Facebook group, please just answer the three simple questions. You all be surprised how many I delete every day that think they're too good to just answer three simple questions. I just want to know. I'm not about growing a big, large Facebook group. I'm about growing a devoted family of people who really honestly want to learn how to grow, how to can their food, how to dehydrate it, how to freeze it, how to grow things that will help improve your health. I don't want any drama. I hate to go onto a, a Facebook group and somebody is talking something about the presidential election or somebody's telling me if I send them $100, how they can invest in stock for me, that kind of stuff. Or somebody's doing a ballet recital. We're going to talk about gardening. Okay, so I don't want a big group. But any of you all in here want to join, I will help you all I can. I took a couple days and I told them, I said, look, I'm getting swamped with orders from my product line for Christmas. I'm expecting my more experienced gardeners, please step up to the plate and, and keep it going. And they did, guys. And then when I was able to get everybody's order out, I came back in and I started answering questions. Okay? Thank you, Quintella. Thank you so much. No foolery. We're not going to have it. Because as soon as I see an idiot, I take them out. And I'm not a hard person. I'm not a person of, you can't have second chances. I'm not, that's not how I am. But I think if you're a grown man and a woman, you don't need to be coming in here acting a fool, especially in my Facebook group. I'll just take them out. Okay, question. Do you put the lid on the first 10 to 12 hours, and then do they put the lid on after any more? You talking about the plastic dome? If, that is, if that's what you're talking about, yes. And I'm getting ready to move on, but before I do, I'm going to tell you some things about that dome and all that stuff, but I want to demonstrate this again for anybody that came in late, because I promised that I would, okay? Jiffy C starting mix, 12 quarts, a large container, two quarts of boiling water, pour it all in here, mix it up real good, come back, 
take you one tablespoon, just 15 milliliters of pure cold pressed neem oil. Only the pure cold pressed neem oil, not a neem oil that have a, whole, have a whole lot of chemicals and other ingredients in it. Stir it up real good. Check it. Can you see that? Make sure you squeeze it. Moisture comes out and still nice and fluffy. About the consistency of hot water cornbread. Okay? Okay, then we fill up our six pack and we press as down as we go along until we don't have any more water running out. Then I take a pin, a wooden skinny spoon holder, anything, and I make two holes, diagonal holes. Can you see that? One, two, one, two. And I'm going down only about a fourth of an inch. Then I put my seeds into each hole, about a fourth of an inch. As a rule, your seeds should not go down any deeper than the size of the seed. So if you're growing something like um, butternut squash, pumpkin that has a big seed, then you need to put them down much deeper. Then you just put one seed in each, side, each hole and then... Cover it up. Now, this is the thing I want to talk about right now. The key to this, guys, I'm put my, my, my uh, keyboard down. The thing to this is being neat. You see all this excess soil? You want to make sure that you either wipe it off or put it in. Because when you start spraying your seeds across the top. You don't want to move soil or growing medium, jiffy seed starting mix, and you can move all these little sticks and things like that that's a little bit too thick, I mean too big. When you start spraying, you don't want, you want to spray the area that the seeds are in and just them start spraying, it, spraying it, and then it runs over. Does that make sense? Maybe I can say that a little bit clearer. In the event you get a fungus, you want to be in the habit of keeping everything neat and inside of that six-pack cell, that individual cell, so that when you spray, you don't spray fungus all over. I think I said that right. Did everybody understand what I was saying? If you didn't, let me know. Everybody understood. Now, let's go to the tray. The tray is ideal to sit on top of the heating pad. If you don't have a heating pad, don't freak out. Put it on top of your refrigerator, dryer, a deep freezer, anything like that. Okay, put a towel on top of it and then put this. Okay, and once you fill this up, then you will put your plastic dome. Now, somebody was asking me a question about that dome. Don't leave that dome on 24 hours. Because you'll get too much humidity, and it'll be a dark, damp place, the ideal place for bacteria to multiply. So, you want to keep that dome off, maybe either at night or during the day. You, you decide. I keep mine off during the day and put it on at night. Another alternative is you can take a small little steak knife with a point, heat it up, and put little holes, breathing holes. Think about my greenhouse in my last video so the humidity won't build up. Because this will get real foggy. And then you'll see little water droplets. Then you lift it up and you see fungus everywhere. And it wasn't from a fungus gnat. It was from other funguses that's in this, this natural seed starting mix. 
Any questions there? Now, if we don't have any questions, I've demonstrated it twice. I'm getting ready to move on to phase two. We have germinated our seeds and we see just one little something white or green pops up. It's time for them to go where? Talk to me, people. What do we do next? Okay, Miller's Garden. Okay. Have a done with a bin. Yes, Larita, you got one of those good ones. I don't pay the 50 cents for mine. I wait until they go on sale. Yes. Yes. They go under the light. Okay, now check this out. Check this out. This is full right here. Everybody feel me? Now, what I do is, let me move this out the way. This is out, all this stuff I bought on sale. Five cents, 10 cents, stuff like that. Now, let me plug one of these in. I'm so excited you all said light. Everybody see that? Ready to shop like 32 watt bulbs, too. And so I have a lot of these. This ain't half of what I got. I just brought these out from the grow room. I don't move my shop lights. That's how my bulbs kept getting broken. So I was taking out the heat pad. Then I stack some books, boxes, whatever you want to do. I take the dome off. We don't need that anymore. And I'll put another book up under here to match this one and get this up here like so. Can everybody see it? That's it. I don't hang the S things down anymore. Because as they grow, you just remove boxes or the books. You just move them and give them what they need. Then I start using these lights. Anywhere where I need to supplement the light. If I only have one like this, If I have one six pack, I'll just put it on like there. I'm not gonna have this whole light on and I don't have enough to, to illuminate. Does that make sense? I'm getting out the way so you can see. Y'all tell me. Nobody here? Everybody left? Hey, Cynthia. Okay, yes, everybody with me. So if I just got one six pack that's, that has germinated, I don't need all of this. I have about eight of these. Let me show you. You're all going to be seeing it in the weeks to come. I'll have seeds on top of this. And let me tell you, you see this right here? Don't close that up thinking you're going to get smart and sanitize all of your seed starting mix. You're going to have a, uh, a container full of fungus. Let it breathe. Rewet it if you need to. With what type of water? Boiling water. A little at a time. Okay? That's why I love these lights. Because I can put them anywhere I want to put them. So I'm going to turn this off. Now... See, how am I with time? I'm on here a little bit longer than I planned to. Think I'm going to stop. Think I'm going to stop. And I'm going to get best yet and Tia's question. Let there be light. That's right, Myra. Hey, 
Dan. Somebody said they use plastic shoe boxes. I do too. Look at my videos. You'll see it. I didn't bring everything in here. I also use crates. I use those little milk crates. I, put, I use everything. Boxes, shop lights. Butter light 100. Where did you buy the shop lights? Home Depot? Um, Oversight.com? And no, for the shop lights, no. I just use 32 watt bulbs. The only grow bulbs I use is when in the grow lights. They don't get too hot. 32 watt. Uh, I don't have an answer to your question, Bless too. Other than neem oil, I've never used anything else. Okay? I would, I would not put nothing on it. Just sprinkle it with cinnamon if you get a fungus. Or turmeric if you get a fungus. You can Google that, and if you have... Sandy Hamilton, 1968, thank you. If you see, if you find something else we can use besides neem oil, go. Where do you buy, oh, I'll answer that question. Where do you buy the shop lights? I have a question. Is that a regular spotlight? No, it's a grow light. Amazon, Overstock.com, Etsy, Walmart, Greenhouse Mega Store. It's a, it's a, it's not a regular spotlight like you use like a Christmas decorations or a fountain outside or something like that. I try to use those. Those have like spikes in them. These have clamps. And they have this illumination in here. So it projects a lot of light. A regular flood lamp or spotlight is not like this. And they're not expensive, okay? They're not expensive at all. Not at all. Shop around. Okay. What else can, oh, okay, that was your question, blessed too, okay. Uh, about my grow light from the depot, $10, wonderful. Oh, Quintella said, um, she bought, yeah, and I put on my Facebook page, my, my, my Facebook group, I tell, they get more stuff than you all. They special. So if you want to join and get some special tips, they get the chance to see a little bit about my videos before I actually put them on. And I tell them, nobody's seen this but you all. It's coming out in the next video. Anything that I buy that I don't put in the videos, I share with my Facebook group. I bought, be right back, I'll go get it. Some bulbs. These are the last bulbs that I got from Amazon. I want to say they were on sale for $9.98 for three of them. LED grow bugs, energy saving. And they're nine watt and they're good for germination and growing things like greens. Anything that's going to flower and produce a fruit then you need to have a full spectrum bulb. You see that one right there? See that purple where my hand is? I think that tree is getting ready to fruit because it has real long, thick, thick thorns that will hurt you. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna put some full spectrum. I got those. I'm not sure if I got them at Walmart or Amazon, but I posted it in my Facebook group. Once you join, you can just go back and look at all the pictures and then click on them and it'll give you all the information. Okay? All right. Uh, yeah, see, 
I, I told my Facebook group about these lights, this little reading lamp with two globes. That's the word I couldn't think of earlier, globe. With these two globes on it for only $11.34 before I put it in the video a month later. Okay? So purple or fruit. So purple. I think what you're saying, anything, white bulbs you can use for veget uh, uh, germination and, and green vegetables. Anything that's going to fruit, you need to have full spectrum light. Fruit or flower. Okay? I'll accept it later on tonight, sweetie. Butter light. And you can go and just go look at the pictures. Now, just like most groups, you can post anything to a comment, but your separate posts have to be pre-approved. And you know why. Because I don't go for all the foolishness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so those full spectrum bulbs, I use, like I said, like when my tomato plants start getting a little bit big in the house and I don't put them in the greenhouse, I'll put them under full spectrum. It's a 20 watt bulb. Okay, yes, Brenda. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. It's a grow light watt, but, uh, 20 watt, right? As long as it's a grow light. If you put your hand on it and your hand is burning, take, you can't use that. You see what I just did? I put the skin inside. None of these bulbs generate any heat. And I'll tell y'all something. The sour sap tree smells good. If you think a lemon and a lime tree or orange tree smell good, woo, this one right here, that sour sap tree is delicious. Is full spectrum different than grow light? Yes, full spectrum has all of the rays that the sun has that will allow your plant to grow flower and make a beautiful flower inside the house or a tomato. These won't do that, the grow lights. These are just for germination or a lot of leafy um, type things like mustard, collards, turnips, broccoli. They don't flower until they go to seed, the brassicas. Good questions. I appreciate that. Okay, NS Nubia. How you doing? I know you were here. I use the daylight light bulbs from Home Depot 44566. Do they get real hot? If they don't get real hot and that works for you, I don't have I don't see where there's a problem. Hey Rob from Grow. Oh no, 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 that's not Rob. That's Grow Family Network. I can't think of your name right now, but I can, I can think of Bev's. <laughs> How far away are the lights? The lights should be two inches above the seed. Here, anywhere you can get them. You can make sure that everything is getting light. I just put my hand there, my sour stops. You know, because some people say you, you shouldn't grow things that are not in your zone. I disagree. If you're growing something that your family is going to be dependent on to survive, don't grow it in your zone. But I don't think it's nothing wrong with exp experimenting. Okay? And the only reason why these are not in the greenhouse, if you go back and you look at my other videos about the sour sops, it's too much humidity in there, and they, they, the leaves fall off. Okay. Okay, Tia, I didn't get your question. Uh, they say it takes three to five years for a soursop tree. V Solo, nice. Uh, thank you for coming in. You in zone six, so that's go you're always going to be in the house for a long period of time, and then can go out in the heat of the late spring summer. Thank you, Taishi, for your question. How many hours? Next time, all caps. How many hours do we keep the grow lights on? Some people say sixteen hours. I turn mine on the first thing in the morning, and I turn them off when I go to bed. And lately, I've been watching TV around 9 o'clock, so about 8 o'clock, I turn the lights out. Well, I don't be watching TV. The TV be watching me because I'll fall asleep in my recliner. <laughs> okay? So just turn them on when you get up and turn them off when you retire for the evening. 
And you can Google that for specifics, but I've been growing seeds for years. I don't follow a rigid, rigid schedule. Okay, I can't think of a Bab's husband's name, Girl Family Network. I'm sorry. How long do we keep the plants on grow plates until springtime? Yes. And you can go to that app I told you, Seed to Spoon, uh, Farmer's Almanac, or your local, um, what do you call it, guys? Horticulture office or whatever that gives you all of that. Hi, Deborah. That gives you all that information. You'll know when to plant them outside. But you can go to home, uh, Farmer's Almanac. That's a quick one. And put, put in your zone. And it'll tell you when to start the seeds, when you can transplant them outside, and when if you need protection. Everything that I'm going to be starting seeds, January to February, will go to my greenhouse by the end of February, 1st of March. I won't have anything growing in the house other than those that maybe those two sour sop trees. Because I've kind of liked them there. I don't think I'm ever going to put, put them back outside. Because I just up-potted them into some really big pots on, on little caddies and and uh, yeah thank you until that's mr bev since he won't tell us <laughs> that's mr bev's <laughs> with all the cheering beautiful beautiful channel guys check out his channel he up there with the big dogs in the big league extension office thank you unicorn lady and klaus and world you all know I'm 66 going on 67. Your ex local extension office, they will have uh, notifications for you. Because I get it for North Texas, and I planted it, I planted it. I posted it on my Facebook group for anybody. And I was surprised that one of the ladies in my group is from Australia, but we have the same growing zone. And she thanked me for posting that. Uh-huh. My goodness, is the site easier than the books? Well, no. No, but if you if you want a quick quick answer to something, you just go plug it in and what you're looking for, and they'll give you an answer instead of reading the whole book. But I do buy a lot of books. Should we grow? Should we grow? I think this is a question I get a lot. Should we go trees uh, from... Mm-mm. I lost your question. I think it says, should we go trees from seeds? Oh, thank you. Um, no, I wouldn't grow trees from seeds. It takes too long. However, I am growing these from seeds, these two soursop trees. Um, and pecan trees I'm growing from seed because they were free. The squirrels put them in my food forest in containers or in the ground and I put them where I wanted them. So, but I don't know if it's going to be true to the seed if I'm going to have to graft it on to another pecan tree. I don't know. But all other trees, fruit trees that I have, they all came from little tree saplings, little baby trees. Okay? So, I hope I answered your question. Okay. Antia, did I get your question? Best yet, did I get your, get your question? Okay, Gardener 99 said that left the neem oil outside and it's frozen. Just put it in the microwave, sweetie. If it's pure cold pressed neem oil, it's just like shea butter, avocado butter, mango butter. All you got to do is put it in a pot of boiling water, double pot, or you can put a, scoop a little bit out and put it in the microwave. That's what I did today because mine was in the window. Okay, so when we come back next week, I'm praying and hoping that everybody will have germinated their seeds. Again, I told you guys, don't freak out. I got your back. If for some reason your seeds don't germinate, we're going to work something out because I don't need any. And so I'm going to germinate, you know, a couple six packs. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the canning book, DS Nibia. 
And until you, you don't give no shout outs. Uh, you just taking your little moderator chain a little, your wrench a little too far. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I already shouted out Grow Family Network. In fact, I haven't done this in a while. Everybody that has a site, put your Grow Zone and your channel. Oh, thank you, Best Yet. Everybody, <laughs> Yankee sister laughing at what I say. I got on Tia's case. I know, Auntie, I'm messing with you. I know, I know, Aunt Sweetie, you know, you know, I'm just having fun. So everybody that has a website, please, please, please put your growing zone and just say yes. And so when we go back and look at the playback, all the people like Cynthia, who had to come in a little bit later and she, see like Gardener 99, Grow Zone 9. Yeah, I'm just messing with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Clausen World is in zone seven. Osnat Homesteader is in nine. And I gotta check out some of these channels too. I've been so busy. Until five B but no channel. <laughs> That's okay. And Mr. Rob is uh Etzion's family garden. Wonderful information. Good food, guys. Angela's Garden says, hi, Angela. I know you were here. Zone 7, Container Crop 7B, Root Shooting Garden 8. Oh, this is wonderful. Garden Master 242. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gardening with cocktails. Yeah. Good desserts, good drinks, and some gardening information. Ty Lily is all the way in Denton, but I don't have a channel. That's okay. When I move, you move, Ty Lily, just like that. My son lives in Denton as well. Miss Irene is in 7A. I missed somebody uh, before, Miss Irene. NW, 8A. Quietly Garden is in AB and 8A. I've heard people saying they bought a line. And Gigi Simpson, I love your attitude. Mwah! She says she's going to be starting the channel soon. Remember that name, Gigi Simpson. All right. V Solo, you need to get some of this going, girl. This stuff like five, ten years old. I don't know how old this stuff is. It don't get too rusty because I don't bring it outside that much. This one right here, you can see it's a little rusty because I, I had it outside, but... If you don't have a channel now, start. Go back and look. I, I think I deleted all of my 2015 data off of uh, YouTube, but you go back and look at some of my videos. It wasn't even a minute long, guys. Two minutes. You have to start somewhere. Okay? Okay, I'm glad you all enjoyed the class. Now, next week... I want to find out who got some green to pop through the surface. Did you put it up under a grow light? Did you use a heating pad? And then we're going to see uh, how well mine are doing. And then I'm going to share with you how we pot up. Some people say up pop, but gardeners say pot up. Here's some stuff I got for 5 and 10 cents at the dollar store. Let me share this with you. I keep all my little containers wash them out. If I find something on sale like 50 cents or a dollar at Lowe's, I will keep these things. I buy some of my pots from eBay. These came from eBay. You know. Uh, so we're going to be potting up as we go along. Okay? Ty Lily is in DeSoto. Yeah, you, you're right there with me. Somebody said something about all night. Oh, Monday Night Live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Home Inside and Out. She said she hadn't made a video in a while. And the first one was of the year was Saturday. I'm going to do my best to check you out. Be yourself on the video. Don't try to be nobody else. People will give you all kind of advice, especially those that don't have a lot of... Uh, Subscribers. I don't know. They try to come and critique you. And a lot of people that do have a lot of subscribers. Should I say it? Mama said it ain't what you say. It's how you say it. I'm going to say this. Don't let anybody discourage you. 
Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't try to imitate. I think that's why I fell in love with uh, Bev's husband. Because he himself, himself, best yet, Rob, Miss Irene, Dan's prima culture food force. They just be themselves. I'm the same way. Okay, let's get started. Thank you for watching. Bye now. My little grandkids. Bye now. <laughs> you know, that's just me. I, I was saying this when I was teaching beauty school. All right, students. Thank you very much for being in class today. Bye now. I don't know where y'all going, but the bell rung. Y'all got to get out of here. <laughs> this is my work study hour. <laughs> I, I do it. I'm doing everything the same way I've been doing it for years. Okay? Okay, so yeah, we're going to pot up. Oh, I know what to tell you. This. I get these at Lowe's. Lowe's buy their plants outright, so they don't care about the containers, the crates, all these kind of things. They'll just let you have it. Home Depot, buying these plants will come and pick them up. These little things like this, I say, you are, the lady told me I can have the show, yeah. So I take them and I put them in here. They all fit. Fit them on top of a heating pad. And then you guys know when we pot up, I've been telling y'all since November, this is the ones I used last year. Here are the 12 ounce little clear solo cups. I put a hole right there, a hole right there, and a hole right there with my little scissors. 12 ounce. And then this one is 16 ounce. It fits in here perfectly and it'll wick the water up. That's how you keep the fungus down. We're going to talk more about that next week. You keep that fungus down by watering from the bottom and keeping your top dry. Okay? If there aren't any questions, I got about 20 of these to, just to put my little pots in, my little solo cups. Broke Farmer 76 told me he got to work tonight. He called them liquor cups. These little liquor cups. <laughs> I got some liquor cup holders. <laughs> Three. I'll just, just take them when I go to so They said I can have them. Okay, any other questions, everybody? Everybody got their seeds? There's one lady who sent me money for uh, postage and stuff late. Hers didn't get out, go out until New Year's Eve. So she probably going to get hers, you know, in time. But I think everybody else got their seeds. I found plant heating pads at Lowe's yesterday. That's wonderful. They don't have that at the Lowe's. Of my, well, I can't say. They may have it now because... I haven't been into Lowe's, but since the pandemic, people are requesting more and more gardening things. And these big box stores are, uh, <coughs> excuse me, stocking more stuff that people want. Okay. How much were the grow pads, uh, Ty Lily? The uh, grow light. I mean the heating pad. Uh, that tray looks like it would fit nicely on a grow tent shelf. Yeah, and I have some more little plastic little shelves. <laughs> they probably end up in here too. Some real lightweight ones that I took plastic and I cut a hole out of it and dropped the grow light down in it. You'll see as this start filling up. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth Shoots and Garden Boots. And the people that ordered seeds, everybody got them except one person, I think. And I'm going to put... Okay, Debbie, you are the one in my, my group. And I, uh, I posted a question to ask you, can you pick up two serenade for $23.95 for me, for me? And you didn't respond. So I had to buy for $59.99 at um, Amazon. You probably didn't see it, and I didn't want to bother you. I know if I would have emailed you personally, you would have said something. I, I just said, let me go buy it. So, but yeah, but I, if you can, if you run across Debbie any more of that for $23.95, uh, you pick me up a couple bottles, um, I will pay you for your time and postage and everything. Tracy, am I still selling my product? Yes. <laughs> I'll never stop selling them. Every day, uh, every time I have a lot, I don't talk about it, but I'll put something up on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Thank you all so much. $26 for the serenade. 
No, that's something else you're talking about. Okay, guys, I promise not to hold you all too long. You guys know I love you. Okay, Debbie, I'll email you. And somebody must be talking about the heating pads. Yes, yeah, standard size is 10 by 20.75 to, to, to uh, accommodate um, the edges. All right, have a blessed night, everybody. I love you guys. Take care. If you have another question, just email me. Don't email me nothing crazy that you can't find out on the Farmer's Almanac or <laughs> your local extension office. I'm not a... <laughs> Let me stop acting silly. Bye, everybody. Email me if you need me. Take care.